Major, here now. How y'all doing? I'm Chris, and you are watching Nature Here and Now. Check this out. You see this little thing in front of my hand right there? This thing here? That is known as the spine-backed orb weaver, aka Gastrocantha canceriformis. How could I forget that? The canceriformis actually refers to its rather crab-like appearance. If you've explored any of the shorelines, I'm sure you've come across many crab species that resemble this shape very similar. Anyhow, this spine-backed orb weaver is a very common species in the southeastern United States as far north as Virginia. The thing is, we're not down in the southeastern states. This is New Jersey and I found five of these in this area so far. Now if you happen to live in the northeastern states, you might come across the Spinomicrothena, which is another type of orb weaver. There are tons of orb weaver spiders. There's over 3,000 species at the very least of orb weaver, and they come in all shapes, sizes, and colors like this one here. The thing is, the, the northeastern species that looks a little similar to this because it also has a spiked abdomen is, uh, well, the spine-backed or spiny microthena. Its science name is Microthena gracilis, right? Being orb weavers, they obviously make these giant wagon wheel shaped webs, you know, like a broken pane of glass, very characteristic of all orb weaver spiders. That's why they're called orb weavers. It's an orb web. Um, and they eat like flying insects. They're not ground hunters like the wolf spiders. They don't make that chic carpet web like the grass spiders. And they don't make a cobweb like the black widows. They make the round orb and that's, you know, designed specifically for catching flying insects, which is why they usually set them up between trees or drafty areas, because that's where the insects will be flying through. Um, what's really cool about these spiders is this particular species comes in all sorts of colors. I've come across these spiders so many times when I visit Louisiana. I've seen them in red, yellow, blue, white, brown, and I think I'm forgetting another color. But just that alone is a, a large variety of color for one species of spider. This one here is black and white, and I like to call them like the Halloween spider because depending on what angle you look at it from, it looks like you know something like out of Nightmare Before Christmas. If you look at it from the other angle, it almost looks like a skeletonized, you know, cartoon monster. You know, it looks it just looks like a skull with a smiley face or a bit of a dramatic face, depending on what side you look at. Um, now as I said, there's a very common spiny orb weaver species in the northeastern states, the spiny microthena. Um, but once you, you know, look closer at the two species, you'll see that their differences are pretty obvious. Fortunately, I can find both species in this woodlands right now. Let's have a closer look at the, the spineback orb weaver first. Now you see that it's got somewhat of a wider abdomen with the spikes coming off to the sides, you know, two predominantly large spikes. And it's somewhat of a you know, a round spider, not very big, about the size of, I don't know, an M&M. &M. <laughs> um, and if you're fortunate enough to find the ones that are yellow or blue or green or something, it's going to be pretty easy. Here's a perfect example of the Microthena gracilis. And it's kind of funny because they are a little bit top heavy. Um, their abdomen you know, kind of hangs down, so I literally have the camera underneath the spider looking up towards the sky. <laughs> that set aside, you could definitely tell how these are rather different from the gastroacantha. I mean, they have more of a, a vertical or, you know, a long abdomen from head to tail, whereas the gastroacantha has a wider abdomen from side to side. This species right here is really common in the northeastern forests and probably down south too, I just don't know that for sure. And right now I'm finding both species in the same woodlands. You see, at first glance it, it could easily look like the Microthena gracilis. But upon closer inspection you can see that they're, you know, easily differentiated. Something that's really common among orb weaving spiders is they generally hang in their webs in the center so that they can feel any vibration on any of the strands around it. It channels that vibration towards the center and the spider has its feet attached to several of the indicator strands, you know, the key strands that 
let the spider know where the food is and it can run out and dispatch that or neutralize that prey item. Uh, something else that's really characteristic among orb weavers is the fact that they're generally hanging their webs face down. So right over here is where the head is of the spider. Um, but you see these main, the large spikes coming off the two sides. That's a big, you know, characteristic of this species. Actually, I haven't been down south for like 15 or 20 years, and I've really missed seeing this species and, of course, the Nephila spiders, but that's a whole other story. Um, I'm really excited to see these species up here, up north, but I'm also kind of like surprised that it's not really supposed to be this far north. And in the past like 40 days or so, I found four or five other species of insect and arachnid, you know, that belongs in the southern states, but I'm finding it up north. And I wasn't finding these things last year or in previous years. You know, that might have something to do with climate change. You know, the temperature's getting warmer up north. The winter's getting a little bit milder. Uh, summer's getting very hot and humid. And if you don't really believe in that kind of thing, you know, what can I do? Um, you know, we all have our opinions and stuff, and some of them we can keep our little secret, right? <laughs> uh, I don't mean to offend anybody. I should edit that out. I'm sure you can understand why these animals are covered in spikes. I mean, the first reason is somewhat obvious, right? I mean, no bird or lizard or even a human really wants to swallow a spiny morsel of food. Can't be very pleasing, can it? But the real reason, or the other reason, I find to be a rather ingenious solution created by nature. And it's a little bit on the abstract side. You see, if you take, a, well, a grape, its size isn't very big, is it? You can easily just swallow a grape down. But if you put long spikes coming off of that grape, it now increases the diameter of that grape without actually having to increase the mass of the grape or the, the main body of the grape, right? Um, I mean, think about seashells that you might find at the shore, right? You've got a shell this big, the whelk or snail or whatever lives within is only so big. Now, growing that shell is a little bit nutritionally, you know, cost expensive, right? If you have large spikes coming off it, you, in effect, increase the, the size of that thing without actually having to increase the body mass of the creature within. And it's just really cool. Um, I mean, what if you have a wallet? You can easily just snatch that wallet up, throw it in your pocket, run outside a door, or if you're a thief, you can jump through a window, grab that thing, and jump back out. But if you have long spikes or poles coming off that wallet in several directions, you can no longer get it through that window, can you? And that's pretty much what goes on here. The little spikes in that thing increase the diameter of the animal, making it harder for something to swallow. It's gonna to have to be a larger predator. It might look elsewhere for something that's more nutritionally valuable than this tiny little morsel you know, of nutrition. It's just really cool. I know I said that in a very clumsy manner, but you know, it's late, I've been trudging along all day, and uh, there you have it. <laughs> now admittedly, I love to call this the Halloween spider for obvious reasons, but to be completely honest, there's two different spiders that I like to call Halloween spiders. The Gastrocantha and the Marbled Orb Weaver. Tell me that these things don't look perfect for a Halloween setting, don't they? I love spiders. So there you go, Gastrocantha canceriformis, the spine-backed orb weaver. And, you know, I'm excited to be finding this species because I haven't seen them in almost 20 years. But I say that with a grain of salt because it's supposed to be a southern species of spider. And sorry about the lighting here. I got to stand as still as I can because you wind up blinded. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you like watching spider videos, I have an entire playlist of spider videos. And if you haven't already, hit that like button and hit the subscribe button because it tells the algorithm that you liked the video you just saw. And it helps me to get out to habitats like this and produce videos like the one you just saw. And a little bit goes a long way. Once again, I'm Chris Ignato. I'll see you somewhere else if you're not blinded first.